Hey guys, this is David from Benchmark. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about localizations. Now this video is for guys who are just getting into GPS. Maybe they took their base and rover out, they saw their shots are you know a foot or two out from what they expected them to be. And uh, we're not really going into all the details on the math behind this. We're just sort of talking about what they are, when you need to use one, what they're for, that sort of thing. And then I'm gonna take you guys out into the parking lot and I'm gonna show you step by step how to do one real quick in Field Genius. To do a localization, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need your RTK receiver to have a fixed solution at all the points. And you're gonna need a number of known points in the real world that you know the coordinates of. So from 7,000 miles up, a localization is basically just taking your GPS data and transforming it to match your real world data that already exists, okay? So if we take this sheet of paper here, and we this is this is what the GPS sees, this is the GPS world, and these are my, my two known coordinates. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your rover with the RTK fix, and you're gonna go to one of them, and you're gonna shoot the point until that's where I am. And now you can see if I just do this with the one point, I can still spin and rotate this and fold it around and do all sorts of things to sort of get my position messed up. So what I want to do is take my rover to a second known point that I have here. I'm going to shoot that one in as well. And what you can do is you can go around your job site and you can do that with as many known points as you need to. And every, every known point that you add is sort of tying it in a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter. And it gets rid of all the sort of the rotations and the, the scaling issues and the translation issues that you can have with just one or two point localizations. But a few tips and tricks that I like to do in the field is one, I like to have my entire job inside of my control points. I don't want to have my control points like this and then be working way out here because you can see a ton of skew on that local transformation and, and it's just, you can even see here the paper's folding. That's a good way to visualize it. Whereas if I have you know, more control points and my job is sort of inside the boundary set by them, that's a lot better. Now, as you get in bigger and bigger and bigger jobs, you can start thinking less of this as a poster, more like a bed sheet. If you're pulling it over something, it starts to sag in the middle, you might wanna nail down a control point in the middle just to, to keep things tight. One other thing I like to do, always make sure you have a point or two inside your job as a checkpoint. So when you do your localization, you can then go check something to make sure it's good. You don't take all your data, go back to the office and then realize, oh shoot, we've missed and everything's distorted and we gotta go back and do the job again. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're doing local transformations, when you take your rover to the point, turn the tilt sensor off. You don't need to keep it on. You're gonna be leveling up the pole anyways, and all you're doing in that scenario is adding another source of error into the control, and that's gonna make the localization a little messier. And finally, if you don't already have one, a bipod is a great tool for doing localizations. You can set the pole, you can plumb it up over the point, you can do an average shot, you can let it cook for 10, 20, 100, 1,000 shots, whatever you want on your control, and that thing's not gonna slip. It's a lot better than you standing out in the bush holding it trying to keep that bubble in the middle. All right, so when do you want to use a localization? Localizations are really useful for when you want to tie your data in with another data set or the real world or anything like that. If you're looking to tie your data to something else, you're going to have to do a localization. Now sometimes you guys will call it a local transformation, you might call it a site calibration. They all mean the same thing. You're going to tie your data into something that's already there so that it lines up going forward. Now you don't need to do a localization if you're just looking to find relative distance or you're looking to get volumes or something like that. You don't necessarily need to, to localize your data because all of the information you're looking for is, is collected in your job with the data that you have and you don't need to, to bring it into anything else. Localizations are great for if you're looking to do a boundary survey and you're tying your rover into a property corner. They're great if you're on a mine site and you need to line up all your data with previous mine surveys. They're great if you're showing up on a construction site and your data needs to line up with the last surveyor who was there, that sort of thing. If you're looking to line up with real life survey markers, that's when you use localizations. You don't need to use them for, like I said, volumes. You don't need to use them to find relative distances. You don't need to use them if, if your job doesn't need to be tied into anything else. So now that we've talked about what a localization is, let's go outside and we'll take a look at how you can do one real quick in the field. Okay, so I'm out here with my receiver. I got an RTK fix and thank God doing a localization in Field Genius is fast because it is freezing out. So you can see I'm fixed, I got my bipod. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my known point and I take my bipod out. And I'm just gonna plumb up my rover here. Okay, and then here on my tablet, I'm just gonna go to my project data. I'm gonna go to GNSS local transformation. I'm gonna calculate from point pairs. 
and I'm gonna add a point pair. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking a shot and I'm recording this latitude and longitude and I'm tying it onto that 1,000, 1,000 northing and easting point that's currently in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So my local control is that point one that I recorded and my GNSS control, I'm just going to, oh, sorry, I'm gonna measure that and it's just gonna take a few shots, average them out and then I'm just gonna save that coordinate I'm going to hit add and I'm going to apply that transformation. And now if I just hit done and I go back to my survey screen, you can see right here I'm no longer in the middle of the ocean. I'm actually just in the middle of my parking lot on top of point one. Now if I wanted to add more points to the localization, all I would do is go in there and add more point pairs and just tie them in. And if I don't want to do an inclined plane, I would turn off vertical on all but one of them and I'd be good to go. I can just do my job, scale would be good, rotation would be good, and I'd be in the right spot.